Hello, welcome to this wonderful DVD I put together for you guys. First of all, why do we have video ministry? Why is it important? Well, it really allows several different segments of people to experience worship at Trinity in a very meaningful way. There's several different people. There's uh, the homebound people, people that are usually uh, at home, can't get away because of health, age, things like that. They can uh, get a DVD or even watch online and be a part of their congregation even though they aren't physically there. That online thing is, in a, is a really interesting thing. We have the sermons put on our YouTube channel at Trinity. We can find out where people are watching our sermons from. This is interesting. You know, it depends every week. It's a little different. But we have someone watching our sermons, off in Finland, I think it is, uh, Germany, um, all across the United States, sometimes even other places in the world. They're hearing the gospel about Jesus, and they never walk in our doors. And yet we are able to reach them. I think that it's just amazing that we can do that. Another thing that video ministry allows us to do, well, really our members to do, is to take a DVD after church, or maybe a CD, and share it. Maybe they know someone that's going through a rough time, and the message of the service that day just is right for them. And so they take it, and they can say, here, watch this. I think you could really benefit from this. I, I think this, this message is, is right for you. And it equips our members to share Jesus. So really what we do as a video ministry is extremely important, even though it's more behind the scenes than other ministries. Really what we do in recording service is ideally make someone else, and whoever the someone else is, make them feel like they're right here at church, even though physically they aren't. Make them feel at home at Trinity. So keep that in mind as you record the next service. As we do this training here today, I went back probably a year ago, more than that, and just looked at a bunch of different services, different recordings that we made. There, there are several things I saw. Um, some, three things specifically that I think we can really improve at when we record the service. The first thing is what's called framing. And that's basically how you frame the shot, what you have and where you have it. I'll explain more when we get to that section. The next is transitions, going from one shot to another shot. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's a little awkward. And then following. And this is specifically during the sermon especially, when a pastor happens to be moving around and walking. Being able to follow him and track with him so that the person watching it um, can be a part of the service as well. Okay, now I'd like to talk about framing. There's something called the rule of thirds, and this goes for video as well as still photography. Basically, the rule of thirds is think about your screen being divided in thirds, both horizontally and vertically, okay? Basically, wherever you have one of those lines, so there's there's three sections, top, middle, and bottom, so you have two lines there. Wherever you have those lines, horizontally or vertically, is where you want to put the focus of, of whatever you want people to look at. So here's a picture. You can see in this picture of the Statue of Liberty, you see slight horizontal lines and then vertical up and down lines. And you see in the picture that they have the Statue of Liberty right at the intersection of the top horizontal and the right vertical. It makes the picture far more interesting and it, it just looks better. 
Here's another example. This is a little baby. Notice where the baby's face is. It's off on the right along that one vertical up and down line. He's not really centered on any of the horizontals, but at least that one vertical. And, and it makes the picture really quite, uh, quite pleasing, besides it's a little smiley kid. Here's a picture of a gentleman. Again, notice where the focus is. Actually, his eyes, which we tend to look at when we look at a person, is right at the intersection of the top horizontal and the right vertical. If he were centered right in the middle of the picture, it, it just would not look good. Here's a picture of a lighthouse. Same thing. It's intersecting on one of the crossroads of the thirds. Always try to put your emphasis on a third of one of those lines there. We're going to take a look at some examples from worship. And you'll see a lot of bad framing. Um, I pick these purposely because they're bad. Take a look at this. Grace, mercy, and peace be yours from our Lord and from our Savior, Jesus Christ. Movie prequels are very common these days. Star Wars had, hold, had a whole trilogy of prequel movies. Star Trek has done it. Hobbit is out in the theaters right now. A, a prequel is a movie which shows um, how things began. It shows the, the meeting of certain characters or how things transpired leading up to a, an important event or historical event. <laughs> Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins to God our Father, asking him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Holy and merciful Father, I confess that I am by nature sinful and that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil and failed to do what is good. For this, I deserve your punishment, both now and in eternity. But I am truly sorry for my sins, and trusting in my Savior, Jesus Christ, I pray, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. Lord, have mercy. Grace, mercy, and peace are yours, from God our Father, through Jesus Christ, His Son, our Savior. The Lord is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger, abounding in love. He does not treat us as our sins deserve or repay us according to our iniquities. In his grace and mercy, God has forgiven all your sins. May he give you strength to live as his child. Amen. You may be seated. And is found. This is God's word. Brothers and sisters in Christ, every public building has a lost and found collection. Even here at Trinity, we have a, a pile of lost and found items, things that people have accidentally left behind here at church. I wonder sometimes if, if many of those things are left behind because of, of children. Maybe the child left it underneath the pew on the floor, and, and while leaving, the parents never saw it as it was hidden. Or maybe as, as they're getting everything ready, the, the children distract the parents while they're about to grab for something and then they forget to take it with them. Or, or maybe it, it's the weather. It's raining when you come to church, so you have your umbrella, and then it's not when you leave, so you, you forget your umbrella behind. A lot of reasons why we, we forget things, we leave things behind. 
and we lose them. But that's all things, it's stuff. Thank you, children, for helping us to prepare for the Lord's celebration, for his birth. Our first scripture reading for today is from the Old Testament book of Genesis. It's um, the account of the first death. You can imagine how Adam and Eve felt when death came into the world as a result of their sin. And the death was at the hand of their own children. Although the text doesn't specifically say it, you can almost hear Adam and Eve's yearning for that coming Savior to take away sin. Then our, scripture read, then our second scripture reading for today, which is from the Gospel of Luke, it's the sermon text for today. The time has come for the Savior to be born, and all things are getting ready. From Genesis 4 we read, Adam lay with his wife Eve, and she became pregnant and gave birth to Cain. She said, with the help Okay, so those were some bad examples of framing. Now I have two other examples, and these are actually really good examples of framing. Now, I didn't say this before, but the purpose of using these clips is to show how we can better improve our, our video presentation that we can give people. Not to pick on people. I have no idea who recorded these services. I think I did some of them even. Don't take this personally. Take this as a way to learn and get better at what we do. So here are two examples, good examples, of framing that we've done in worship. Please stand for prayer. O Lord Jesus Christ, stir up your power and come. Take away the burden of our sins and make us ready for the celebration of your birth, that we may receive you in joy and serve you always. Lord of life, you have brought Eric McGathy and Lisa Caroline together. We ask you to bless their marriage ne this next weekend. May you be not just the center of their ceremony, but be the center of their lives together, that they may serve and worship you together. And Lord of life, in your wisdom you have taken the soul Him and all his ransomed people in glory everlasting. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Take and drink. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Okay. Now let's move on to transitions. Transition is just that, transitioning, changing from one scene, one shot, to another. You can do that, to, that transition in different ways. It can be a very fast transition. It can be a slow one. What you pick kind of depends on what's going on in the service and the mood you want to portray. If it's very fast, it's kind of an action type thing. If you transition very slowly, it might be during a prayer. Or something like that that's more solemn, more, um, more reverent, I guess. So it can be fast, it can be slow. You can also do a wipe or a blend or a fade where, where it just mixes from one to the other. First, uh, here are some examples of good transitions that we've done in recording worship.
eternal God and Father, keep us mindful of the shortness and frailty of this present life. Give us hearts of wisdom that we may cling in faith to Jesus, our Savior, and use the time of our... Grace, mercy, and peace be yours from our Lord and from our Savior, Jesus Christ. There's a portion of the Bible which is very familiar, but not everyone realizes that it's actually from the Bible. Back in the 1960s, there was a rock band called The Birds. They had a song. They had a song titled Turn, Turn, Turn. And it, the now we have two bad examples of transitions, and they really aren't really bad. It's just I thought they could have been done a little better, um, both especially in the speed. Um, the slow transitions here were maybe a little too slow, especially for where it is in the service. Also, if you look at TV shows, movies, most transitions are not the wipe, but the blend, the fade in and fade out. Um, just watch and see how the wipe transition comes across to you. I, I, I thought it could have been better if it were not a wipe, but a fade in and fade out. Amen. As we begin a new year, we turn to God's Word, specifically Romans chapter 8. A chapter which offers us great comfort in knowing that no matter what, in all things, God is on our side. The Apostle Paul writes in Romans chapter 8, What then shall we say in response to this? If God is for us, who can be against us? He, who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? Who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? It is God who justifies. Who is he that can... Grace, mercy, and peace be yours from our Lord and from our Savior, Jesus Christ. Often, uh, TV shows will begin with a little teaser. So it's a little video segment right at the beginning that's, that's designed to, to pique our interest, to grab our attention. Maybe it, it ends with a cliffhanger where the hero is in peril, or if it's a murder mystery, it ends with the murder actually being committed and for the rest of the show trying to solve the murder. If it's a comedy, it ends with a good laugh. And then after that teaser comes the opening credits and, and the theme song. Well, the Bible doesn't have opening credits or a theme song, but the Gospel reading today does show Jesus doing the same thing a teaser does. He grabbed the people's attention. He's at his hometown of Nazareth. Uh, Next, uh, we have following. And this really is specific to the sermon for the most part. When a pastor moves around and everything, you really got to be paying attention. This is a hard thing because during the sermon, it can be really easy just to leave the, the shot where it is, the camera where it is, and pay attention to the words of the sermon or you might be doing some other things which you shouldn't be doing and you really need to pay attention. It's hard though because even if you're paying attention, the pastor can move all of a sudden, whoa! You may not have had your hand right there on the joystick, so you really have to pay attention during the sermon, especially because the sermon is what we put on the internet. So really pay attention. Here are some examples of great following, being right on the ball, right on the top of things, and following the pastor. Not strike your foot against a stone. This is God's Word. So... How was 2012 for you? 
Every newspaper, every website practically has a, a way for you to review the year, the big events of the year. But how were they for you? Was it a, a good year? A bad year? Or just, just another year? For God, each year is always the same. As Psalm 91 tells us, we can trust in the Lord because He is our shelter. Listen again to what the, the first verses there said. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will save the Lord. He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Now, why would the psalm writers say that? Why would we say that, that we trust in the Lord? It's because God protects us from life's storms. Think back to this year. Has it been um, a relatively healthy year for you? A year with no major accidents? You still have your job? Your parents are okay? Okay, maybe that's not all of us, though. For some of us, it hasn't been exactly a healthy year. Maybe we have lost a loved one. Maybe we don't have a job. You see, this, this psalm is really talking about one verse. It's all we know about this event. Somehow... These Jews from Galilee came down, and they were offering their sacrifices in the temple. But Pilate had ordered his soldiers to go in and take them, and kind of like a SWAT team assault. And as they were getting them, the Galileans were killed right there in the temple. We don't know much more than that. Uh, perhaps Pilate wanted these people because they were somehow involved in some kind of revolt or, or rebellion. Whatever the details were, and whatever, what does it mean to, to repent? Well, quite simply, that word means to turn around. And unfortunately, in our society, we don't have a lot of great role models on what it means to repent. Often we, we, we see a politician or a professional athlete apologize for something they've done, and when they do so, they, they say, I'm sorry if I offended someone by my actions. That's not repentance. There's one bad example following, and if there's an epic fail, this would be it. Please stand for worship. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. My dear brothers and sisters, today we see that Jesus was rejected as worthless, but nonetheless, he has become the capstone of our salvation.
One of the best ways to improve what you do, what we do as a video ministry here at Trinity, is to watch what others do, professionals, and learn from them. One of the best websites to go to is timeofgrace.org. So Wells Video uh, TV Ministry out of Milwaukee, it's a national uh, program, and they, uh, they do it right. So, so go there and watch one of the sermons. And notice how the rule of thirds is followed. Notice how close they get into the pastor. Not a very big broad shot, but pretty close up so you can see him and see his facial expressions. Really look at that and learn the technical aspects, besides hearing a great sermon. Learn the technical aspects and apply that to what you do. Now, there are a few things that we need to talk about. First of all, the DVD recorders. I think we need to use both. We've been having issues with the main one. Make sure you have rec your recording in both of those. That will definitely help if something goes wrong with one, you always have a backup then. Also, we've been really having a problem, guys, with showing up on time. Or even just showing up. When you're scheduled, put it on your calendar. If you need to, tell mom, dad, tell your spouse, whatever, so that they can help hold you accountable. It's really important that we record these services, because if they don't get recorded, our homebound people, people watching on the internet, they can't watch something if it's not recorded. Please, show up, and show up ahead of time, so that you can make sure everything's on, everything's working right, you got your labels done, and all of that. I just want to say here at the end, thank you. Thank you for your time today, uh, putting in time so you can improve the gifts and talents you have and really improve our ministry, not just to Trinity members, people around the world on the internet, but really your ministry, your service to God. Thank you.